Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to be making our part two charting video over BTI British American Tobacco. It's actually the fifth video I'll be making on this. Uh, so if you're not up to date, make sure you go back and watch those videos. I go over a lot of good information, some red flags, some good things about the company in general. And ultimately, that is how we got these projections for the company and this valuation for the company. And more in particular for this charting video, we're going to focus on matching up this valuation to the chart. We're going to go more into the short term. In my first charting video, we, we talked more about the history of the stock. Now we're going to be focused on the short term. I'm going to go over a bull case scenario, a bear case scenario, how one could go about positioning into this stock based off this valuation. And yeah, I think you're going to like what we got uh, for you in this charting video. I also don't have any uh, video request after this video this is going to complete our BTI series so if you guys got a ticker you want me to uh, make a, a series of videos on I do prefer profitable stocks but I will take any request and I will prioritize those videos over any other videos uh, but nonetheless I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I have no individual holding in BTI. I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose, not even in my index funds. Simply just stating my opinion. Okay, so going over to BTI. So we kind of left it uh, how we left off from the last video. We have our uptrend. My uh, channel is not set, but we do have a channel that is built in right here, give or take right around there. Pretty parallel channel. And uh, yeah, we are still in intact for this for this extension. Um, yeah. So we are not a fully extended stock. We've had a pretty solid sell-off following the 2017 acquisition. Very interesting how this panned out leading up to that acquisition. Uh, yeah, very interesting stuff. But nonetheless, we're going to take this FIB tool off. And we're going to uh, start by going over a couple details. We're on a week chart right here, so we're going to switch over to a day chart. Now, a couple things that I want to point out. When you're in big falls like this, I always normally... Uh, I have a fib tool retraced out right here. Now I have it down to the initial fall because we do get a nice ABC correction off of this fall. We do get a nice little fall right here. You could take this to the bottom, but ultimately, you know, it does match up right there. We get some nice action at my first retracement. But nonetheless, I like how this matches up more here at this first retracement. And we do get direct contact with my 382 retracement right there. Now, one thing that I would be interested in is this price action and how close we are to our long-term uptrend. Uh, but we do go over this. It is actually the back test of our neckline over here. We have a left leg double bottom extended right leg back test of the neckline that just so happens to meet in off of my downtrend. Pretty interesting how that kind of corresponds right there. Yeah, if you haven't seen the last video, a lot of great information there. So make sure you go look at that. Uh, but nonetheless... Uh, let's go over some of these case scenarios. So right here, we're in a retracement right here. How could we possibly get down to this long-term trend line? What if we don't reach that long-term trend line? Okay, this is one thing that I would be looking for in terms of this. We do have a decent fall right here. Uh, I would want to take a fib tool top of the move, bottom of the move. Now we have this double top structure that comes in between my 702 and 786. Uh, could you say that this is a 702 retracement? Yeah, you could. I, when you get a double top in like this, the first thing that's going to go to my head is that it's potential that we are getting a five wave structure with this being a wave two. And do I consider this a wave three? I don't. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. But ultimately, if we did get a wave three that cracks that support, I'd look for a back test of wave one where we then would get a wave five. Now, if we do get a wave five, that means we are going to come in contact with this long-term trend line. Where are we coming in contact with this long-term trend line? Do we get bought up based off of demand and not ever get a full wave five to come in and then we turn bullish off this long-term trend line? It, it, it's all tough to say and you need more information, but nonetheless, we do have a lot of gaps that need to be filled down here. But keep in mind that this is a foreign stock, and foreign stocks, they trade on different exchanges. So when they open on the NASDAQ, the prices normally are going to gap up or gap down based off the trading action in those foreign exchanges. 
so you do have to keep that in mind and it's something something that you that is important to understand when trading foreign stocks uh, but nonetheless if if we did get something like this transpire and we got some good volume off this trend line uh, how would I play this so meeting up right here just in particular now I know that it we still have a long ways to go a lot of information is still needed before we get there but if we were to meet this trend line somewhere in here we are really getting close uh, to this first middle point right here I'm going to just mark out a couple lines real quick uh, for that window so that starts around 3550 we'll just put it right there and that window goes down to 31 and some change we'll just leave it at 3150 so this is basically my middle assumption right here now just looking at the gap fills inside of this we got a gap right there gap right there gap right there we got two gaps right here I'm just gonna put one line for that we do have a gap right here we got a gap right here now how are you gonna know how to potentially start filling out a position now the way now going back to the everything money software I like to buy this middle assumption that is just me and if I'm being greedy in the middle of my low and middle assumptions but ultimately when we get down to this low assumption and I'm looking to fully build out my position I want my position to be around three percent now I've stated before that anytime I'm starting a position I always start with a tracker share now if we were to get some price action down in these ranges when am I going to start that tracker share when am I going to up that position now I can see that the start of my uh, of my ch of my window that I'm looking to buy is a little bit below my trend line so that's very interesting to say the least but is there any other information that we can see in here now I'm going to quickly touch base with why isn't this a crack of support so if I'm saying this is my wave one right okay we trade below it that's a crack of support right no not necessarily because we get right back on top of it right away and we actually only set one close we do set two closes below that but what's really interesting is this gap fill right here now I'm gonna mark this line with a different color I'm gonna mark that with a red line I'm actually gonna get rid of this right here and we're gonna change this color to something uh, we'll go something that's easy to see we'll go this light blue color Okay, so you see how we fill this gap. Now, on our first initial drop, which is our wave one, you see how we never break below this? I'm sure there was a pretty solid order set right there, right below this gap. They did not want this gap to get filled. Now, it just so happens that on this, when you could consider this a crack of support, this wicks through that gap fill, and we actually do turn bullish short term. Now, is there anything else that I see corresponding right here off of this double top into the 702 and there definitely is you get a fall you get a retrace you get a crack of support after that crack support you back test pretty much the you set this double top into the bottom of my wave one pretty close it does extend but we we get a couple closes above it but ultimately we get this double top structure come in and then you do get an exhaustive wave down to fill this gap fill let's not forget that this fills this gap right there on the money almost I mean beautiful entry if you had this identified um, and at the end of a five wave structure now we're gonna go over a quick bull case scenario because we do have a clear five wave structure right here now I would want to see what this shorter term retrace is and this ultimately never set the close above my 702 go figure and we put a wick into our last retracement the 786 how interesting is that I mean do you think anybody went short in right here I, I would be shocked if people think that that people didn't go short right here because this is a hard rejection off my 702 and we get a clear five wave structure that goes off of that now how could this transpire into something that's bullish now we are at the end of a five wave structure now I'm looking for some sort of double bottom some sort of higher low now during this whole course in time you have a high you have a lower high you have a lower high lower high lower high in the same time period you have a lower low lower low lower low now because we set this lower high right here does that mean that we're gonna set a lower low not necessarily because we do have some gap fills right here if we get some if we get some good volume off of some of these gaps I'm gonna get rid of this line right here because I got my point across right there now we do have some gap fills right here 
and these two are in particular. This one gets filled. This one gets filled the following day, but these two are open gaps. If we get, this is a buying window right here. If we get some good volume and we get a higher low set in, people are automatically going to set that trend line. And the one thing they're going to be looking for is a break of this high. If they get a break of this high built off of this second higher low right here, you know, it's possible that this gets bullish and we never ultimately reach our long-term trend line. I'm going to put that trend line back in. I mean, Ultimately, this is where our long-term trend line is at, and if if this starts turning bullish and we never reach this, you know, it's possible that we actually do get a push. Now, a bull case scenario, the first thing on my mind is that we're looking for a 618 or a 702 retracement. The same, the same way that I'm always looking at, at the first retracement, I'm looking for that 702 retracement. Now, if we are able to buy this gap, what type of run are we looking for? Headset went out there. Always seems to go out when I'm trying to record a video. But nonetheless, if we are to get some type of 702 retracement, we're looking for a 54% run right there. I mean, I would say that's a bull case scenario, but uh, if we are able to push through that 702, I mean, if I go back to this original uh, retracement or looking for my extension, I mean, $100 is not out of the range. And it just so happens that that meets in pretty much with my first extension right here. Isn't it funny how, how these two extensions correlate like that? I mean, uh, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide, but I think that's very interesting right there, how this first extension off of this drop meets in with my full extension off of this drop back in 2008. I mean, I'll leave that to you guys, but I think that's that's mind-boggling right there. Uh, but I am going to take these retracements off. And, yeah, I mean, there's so much information to go over. It's, it's very tough to say, but if you are starting to fill position off right here, you know, if you think that it's starting to turn bullish right here, and you were looking at this as a buying opportunity, and you like the valuation of the company, you know, buy a tracker share, that way you have it in your portfolio and you're able to uh, to easily monitor the stock. And if you and if you're wrong and we get a crack of this support and we start reverting back down to this trend line, okay, maybe this trend line is an area where we can uh, start actually building out that position. Now, me personally, I'm probably not going to be buying this this uh, first buying window right here, but I. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we set some sort of, sh of higher low in off of either of these gaps. I mean, you're at the end of the tail end of a five-wave structure. You're looking for the double bottom to come in. If good volume comes in right here, I mean, it's not out of the question. But it does have a lot of resistance that's going to be beaten. you got a downtrend right here. you got a downtrend right here. I mean, and you got a down. I mean, you, there's so many different ways that you can map in a downtrend right there, and none of it looks very good when I'm doing it on my chart, to say the least. But um, it's gonna have a it's gonna have a tough fight, and I actually do have some of the moving averages pulled up over here uh, on Yahoo. And this double top that came in, double topped right into my 50, got hard rejected. We gap down. Now this could be a bullish look. This is a green candle. We gap down. We fill the gap. And it gets a little bit of a sell-off, but we do still have one more gap that is right here. If I were to mark that on my chart, this gap is still below a, it would be a triple top into this 50-day. And if I were to see that, okay, we're probably going to come down and test these gap fills down here, which just so happens to be my 100 on a weekly. We got 200 weekly moving average. We did get an exit of the commodity just recently. That could be a catalyst to start turning bullish, and we don't even go fill those gaps. I mean, it, I mean, it's all, it's all possible. But nonetheless, we do have this double top come in at my 702. If I was looking for a an entry into this stock, I'm looking for a crack of this support. You know, I can get rid of this five wave structure right here. I mean, you guys you guys hopefully get the point. But nonetheless, if we do get a crack of that support, we're going to come down here and if we get any type of rejection off the bottom of my wave 1, you know, we're coming down to this trend line. It's going to be inevitable. I'm telling you guys that right now. And just so happens this trend line is actually getting really close to my middle assumptions right there where we like the valuation of the stock. 
So, uh, yeah, starting to build a position in right here. And if we're wrong in our analysis and we actually get a crack of this trend line, okay, let's go look at the left of the chart. Do we have more gaps in here? Yeah, 32 looks like a pretty good area just off of first glance. I mean, it didn't take me too long to identify this gap right here. Got some pretty solid support built in there, even dating back to the left over here. Now, if we even go lower, I'm sure there's a gap filling that drop. But if we have to, we'll go over to the left of our chart even more. I mean, our low assumptions is 23 to 27. Are there any gap fills in this area where we would feel confident filling a position? It looks like that gap gets close to getting filled, but I see a gnarly gap right here around 22.5. If 22, if we got down to 22.5, you know, I'm probably, I probably have a position built out, and we're sitting right around that 3% range. And if I'm wrong and the company goes out of business, okay, I'm out 3% of my total wealth, just like that. But uh, I, I, I've liked everything that I've seen in the company so far, and you know, there is a lot of information that I have to go over, but that just off a of first glance is what I'd be looking for. Uh, we have a longer term five wave structure, but short term, you have a five wave structure that's coming into an end right here. One, two, three, four, five. If we get a higher low in here, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this ended up turning bullish. But that is going to complete the video a little bit longer, and I felt like I was kind of repeating myself a lot right in there. You know, it might not get good. Uh, you might not look at it as good content, but nonetheless, that is going to complete the video, and we'll see you on the next one.